this evening is Mr. Brian Grodman. <laughs> Everybody clap for Brian. <laughs> Hard worker. He likes to take charge. <laughs> Brian has been extremely active with our New Hampshire Israel organization since it began in 2006. He is also active in other organizations which support Israel's legitimate right to exist in a peaceful manner. He and his three children have been to Israel in total over two dozen times. Thank you, Brian. Let me give you a tidbit of information before I introduce the next speaker. Let me tell you a little bit about the geography of Israel, because not everyone has the pleasure of going. The geographic size of Israel is smaller than New Hampshire, and Jerusalem is at roughly the same latitude as southern Georgia. The narrowest part of Israel is only nine miles wide, which is just north of Tel Aviv. And this is the same distance from where we are now at Veterans Park to the Hooksit Toll Booth in the south, to the, sorry, Hooksit Toll Booth to the north, the Merrimack Toll Booth to the south, the town of Chester to the east, or the town of New Boston to the west. And that's how small and narrow Israel is at times at that one place above uh, Tel Aviv. Now let me tell you about a wonderful gentleman, a prolific writer, and an activist extraordinaire. Charles Jacob, according to the foreword, is this country's only national, which is this country's only national Jewish newspaper, is one of America's top 50 Jewish leaders. Charles has spent his career, career creating institutions for Israel, the Jewish people, and even for modern-day slaves. Today, Charles, along with a Christian scholar and an authentic Muslim reformer, heads Americans for Peace and Tolerance, a group that exposes radicalism in American communities. Their upcoming documentary on the Saudi-funded Mega Mosque in Boston will shock and hopefully awaken us all. And tomorrow, Charles and his wife are escorting their daughter to Jerusalem where she will spend the year studying. Ladies and gentlemen, Charles Jacobs. This is beautiful. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Vision. Everybody wave to Karen Weinstein, my, my uh, grassroots heroine. We gather here today to stand with Israel because there's a crisis in the Holy Land. And we are a people who stand with our friends in time of trouble. Sixty years after the Holocaust, much of the world, it seems, has turned against the tiny Jewish state. Let me just tick off the threats that are arrayed against Israel today. Number one, first and foremost, is the madman who rules Iran, who says that there was no Holocaust, but who now plans with nuclear bombs to create a second one. Second, there's a massive tumult in the region, the so-called Arab Spring. What freedom-loving person is not delighted when the dictators fall? Who among us did not feel hope when we watched the Egyptians in Cairo's Tahrir Square? We all want to see Gaddafi gone. We all want to see Assad gone. We all wish the people of Libya and Syria the best. And we all wish the United States would have done more to help the Iranians when they revolted. But where is this all heading? Last week we saw in Egypt that those modern-looking, photogenic, Facebook and Twitter Democrats have all disappeared from the streets of Cairo. And instead we saw the Muslim Brotherhood, highly organized and funded and zealous, people who are ready to die not for liberty but for something much, much darker, lusting to kill Israeli Jews and, by the way, Egyptian Christians. They may be able to, they may be able to destroy the Israeli-Egyptian peace, and provoke another, a complete new war. Israel has 80 million people. 
The Muslim Brotherhood now has a chance actually to take over all of the Arab Spring nations. By the way, the Muslim Brotherhood is here in America. And if you stop by my stand there, you'll see films about that. They're spread all across this land, including in Boston. The next threat is the United Nations which with its automatic anti-Israel majority in the General Assembly will pronounce, they will pronounce in September, that the world needs a Palestinian state, the 22nd Arab state on this planet, and none of those other states, none of those Arab or Muslim states can stand the idea of there even being one Jewish state. Don't ever let anybody tell you that the Arab-Israeli conflict is a border war. It's not a fight over border lines. The cause of the conflict is one and only thing, and that is the Arab Muslim rejection of the world's one Jewish state. Somebody just has to say that over and over. The idea of a Jewish state in the heart of the Arab Middle East is for them a humiliation, and even more importantly, and even more importantly, it is a religious catastrophe for them. So in September, the United Nations will declare that Arabs deserve yet another state. This is the same United Nations which between the years 2003 and 2011 condemned Israel more than a thousand times, more than it has condemned Sudan or the Congo and Cuba and Russia combined, more than it has condemned clear and obvious human rights abuses daily perpetuated in all of the Muslim nations combined. And what is it that the UN snake pit likes to condemn? It likes to condemn the miracle of a reborn Jewish state by people who transformed the land of desert and swamp into a land of milk and honey and roads and schools and shopping malls. That's what the world hates. Israel has the highest ratio of citizens with university degrees than any other country in the world. The Jewish state created a political miracle in a region of tyranny and despotism. Israeli citizens, Christians, Muslims, and Jews enjoy civil liberty in the Middle East. Imagine that, a miracle. Israeli scientific and business achievements are nothing short of miraculous. Israel holds the second place in all patent applications in Europe. Per capita, Israel publishes more scientific papers than any other country in the world. Israel has the largest number of biotech startups in the world. Israel has the second highest output, output of new books per citizen in the world. Israel has more companies listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange than any other country besides the United States. Hundreds of millions of people worldwide benefit from Israeli technology. Israel invented the camera pill that you can swallow so your surgeon doesn't have to cut you open to see what's wrong. The Israeli company Teva is Israel's biggest pharmaceutical supplier, giving Americans one out of every 15 prescriptions they have. And Israel restores the sight of Africans in Sudan, repairs the burned skin of, worn, worn, of war wounded children in Iraq. Israel takes in Muslim refugees from Darfur. Israel rushed into Haiti to save lives during the earthquake. And despite all these accomplishments, accomplishments or perhaps because of Jewish accomplishments, the world is not happy with its tiny Jewish state. The hatred once again is rising up. And so, but even, even with the daily drubbing Israel suffers at the hands of the New York Times and the Boston Globe and the Washington Post and CNN, NPR and the BBC, even with a professoriate that tirelessly hectors Israel, even with rising oil prices, even with dangerous enemies who name America's support of Israel as a cause of their rage, even with all this, 70 to 80 percent of Americans strongly support an Israel alliance with America. And that's because of another miracle. That's because of another miracle. And that's because the Jewish people have friends like you. Israel will survive, God willing, because the God of Israel has given us courage and strength and resiliency to the Israeli people. And because the Jewish people have friends in America, and the most important of our friends are our Christian friends. So to my Christian friends, let me say today that more than ever, not just Israelis, but all Jewish people value your friendship and your support. And I want to say personally, God bless John Hagee. And if Alan Dershowitz could have given him a hexer yesterday, I'm allowed to say, God bless Glenn Beck.
I want to say from the bottom of my heart that we appreciate our friends. We give special thanks to our Christian friends. We celebrate our friends. We will stand by our friends. And so stand with us today so that we can say together, Am Yisrael Chai, the people of Israel lives. Thank you.